If you have a product idea and you wanna bring it to life, here's how to do it in six steps. First off, let me start by saying that developing an original product idea and bringing it to market isn't a straight line. Everyone has different variables like budget and industry, so there's no blueprint for this process, but there are similarities and approaches that founders take. So today, I'm gonna to teach you six steps that have been consistently used by entrepreneurs to successfully start a business and ship their original product. At the end, I'll also go over tips for the most popular industries, including fashion, food and beverage, and beauty and cosmetics. Stay tuned for that because this is industry specific advice that you'll need to know. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. My name is Michelle Bally and I'm your host. So I myself have brought my own makeup line to life and I've been through the product development process firsthand. The product development process can be broken down into six steps, ideation, research, planning, prototyping, sourcing, and costing. The first step is coming up with the idea. Even though this is the first step, many entrepreneurs get stuck here because oftentimes people are waiting for a stroke of genius to reveal the perfect new product idea. Obviously building something totally new can be fulfilling, but keep in mind that many of the best ideas are the result of iterating upon an existing product. So for example, the Dyson vacuum, in my opinion, is one of the best inventions to exist. Was it the first vacuum to be created? No, the inventor made an iteration of the vacuum to make it better. So don't get hung up on making something totally new. In fact, you can use the Scamper model as a useful tool to quickly come up with product ideas. Each letter stands for a prompt, and you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself some questions. So S stands for substitute. Ask yourself, what materials can you substitute to improve the product? Can you use this product somewhere else or as a substitute for something else? So an idea off the top of my head is you could create dumbbells that use a substitute material which prevents calluses and gym hands. C stands for combine. What would happen if you combined one product with another product to create something completely new? And what would happen if you combined purposes or objectives? Let's take Bluetooth earbuds for example. Earbuds weren't new and neither was Bluetooth technology, but combined together, a new product was developed. And next up is adapt. This refers to brainstorming ideas to tweak a product for a better output. So ask yourself, what do we need to change in order to reach better results? So let's say the issue isn't the product itself, but maybe there's just not enough of the product to meet demand. In that case, you'd adapt the manufacturing process and keep the product the same. M stands for modify. Here, you think about how you can modify systems and processes in order to disrupt an industry. This step makes you think about the bigger picture, not just the product itself. So you ask yourself, how can we change the process in order to work more efficiently? If the market was different, how would the process look like then? So let's take a look at Netflix, for example. They modified a system. They modified the way that people consume movies in order to disrupt the film industry. Let's look at put to another use. So we touched on this briefly, but this technique goes into depth about how to shift an existing product to another market segment or user. So ask yourself this, what are the benefits for the product if used elsewhere? Can we recycle another industry's waste for a different use? Next is eliminate. So this is my favorite because it's the most challenging, but here you're seeing what you can take away from the product or process to force you to look at this from a new angle. So ask yourself, what would happen if we removed a specific part? And if we had to strip the product down to its essentials, what parts would we keep? And the last one is reverse. So innovating can happen simply by changing the order of the process. Ask yourself, what would happen if we produce this backwards? How can we rearrange these steps for a better outcome? As you're doing this method, keep in mind that someone once said, there is nothing new under the sun, but there are lots of old things we don't know. This method really works when you set a timer for three minutes. So just jot things down, everything that just comes to mind unfiltered, and you'll activate the subconscious and potentially transform existing ideas. Research. So you've done some ideation. Now your next task is to research in order to validate your idea. The overall goal in this step is to ensure that you're creating a product that people will actually pay for. With your new idea, you might feel super excited and wanna just leapfrog ahead into production, but that can really mess you up if you fail to validate your idea first. Product validation ensures you're creating a product people will pay for. This protects you from wasting your time, money, and effort on an idea that just won't sell. 
There are several ways you can validate your product ideas. You can start a crowdfunding campaign. With crowdfunding, you get people to pledge money to make your business idea come to life. Crowdfunding is one of my favorite ways to validate a business idea because instead of just asking a friend's opinion, you're validating the idea by asking for investment. If your idea can get a complete stranger to be interested enough in your product that they're willing to pay for it, you're on the path to a winning business. You can get started on Indiegogo or Kickstarter with your crowdfunding campaign. Also, ask for feedback on forums like Reddit. Post a picture to a relevant thread in your niche and ask for honest opinions. Make sure that you're only choosing threads and communities that your target audience would frequent. Look at hard data by using Google Trends. Google Trends will give you historical data on what people have searched in different parts of the world. So type in questions or keywords that consumers are using to find a solution that your product can solve for them. So for example, let's say that your product keeps vegetables fresher for longer. If you use Google Trends to search for keywords like how to keep vegetables fresh, and you see that a lot of people are searching for it, then you have an indicator that your product might be needed. Doing your due diligence during the validation stage is important, but know that you can never 100% validate an idea. There will always be external factors that can't be controlled or predicted. That being said, however you decide to go about validating your idea, it's important to get feedback from a substantial and unbiased audience as to whether they would actually buy your product. Be wary of overvaluing feedback from people who would definitely buy if you were to create your theoretical product. Because until money changes hands, you cannot count someone as a customer. Validation research will also inevitably involve competitive analysis. If you've got a solid idea, chances are there are already players in this space. Do a bit of sleuthing by visiting your competitors' websites and signing up for their email. That way you'll see how they're marketing and how they're making sales. All in all, once you've completed the research step, you'll be able to answer these two questions. Is there demand for my product? Can I differentiate myself from my competitors? If the answer is yes to both, we'll move on to the next step, planning. I know finding a product to sell online is a deep topic and requires research, validation, and knowing how to source and sell the product. So if you're hungry for knowledge and you wanna learn how to do this yourself, you're gonna to wanna to check out the free 40 minute webinar that will teach you how to find and source a winning product to sell. Just click the link in the description box below. Planning. When you eventually approach your manufacturers to build your first prototype, you're going to want to have a concrete idea of what your product's design is and how it will function. So it's important to take the time to plan before you jump into the prototyping. The best place to begin planning is with a hand-drawn sketch of what your product will look like. The sketch should be as detailed as possible. Use labels explaining the various features and functions. Now you don't need to be a professional quality drawer since you won't be submitting this to the manufacturer at this stage, but if you're not confident in your sketching ability, it's easy to find illustrators for hire on Dribbble, Upwork, or 99designs. The diagram should have a list of the different components or materials. The list doesn't need to be inclusive of every single detail, but just the important ones so that you can start planning what you need in order to create the product. For example, a drawing of a purse design could be accompanied by this list. Zippers, large and small, vegan leather straps, protection pouch, embossed label, and interior wallet. After that, start thinking about what category your product will fall into. Will the product be an everyday item or will it be for special occasions? Will it use premium materials or be environmentally friendly? Think about the packaging, labels, and overall quality of your materials before you start sourcing and costing. These are all questions to consider in the planning phase since they will help you not only with the product development, but your marketing as well. Prototyping. The goal of the prototyping phase is to create a finished product as a benchmark sample for mass production. I'll tell you that it's unlikely you're gonna get your finished product in a single attempt. You'll have to experiment with several versions. You'll have to slowly eliminate options and make improvements until you feel satisfied with your final sample. Prototyping also differs significantly depending on the type of product you're developing. In the cheapest and simplest case, you can prototype yourself. This would apply to food recipes, cosmetic products, and clothes, assuming that you have the skill set. However, more often than not, entrepreneurs will work with a third party to prototype their product. In fashion and apparel, this usually involves working with a local seamstress for clothing and accessories. You can even get in touch with a cobbler for shoes. You can really easily find someone local to you by using Google. If you live in a large city, you can tap into student talent through universities and colleges. Administrators from these universities or college programs can usually grant you access to their internal job board, where you can create a request for prototyping help. For objects like toys, 
household accessories, electronics, and many other hard or plastic objects, you might need a 3D rendering in order to make a prototype. Artists or engineers who are trained in design and drafting software like CAD can be contracted to do this. Check out Freelancer to find someone. There are also user-friendly tools like SketchUp, Tinkercad, and Vectory. If you're a founder that wants to learn how to create 3D models yourself, you can save money and have more control over this. After you have a 3D design on the computer, you'll need to turn it into a physical model. Makers used to have to get molds made for each part, and molds are pretty expensive. But luckily, with the innovation of 3D printing, designs can be turned into physical samples at a much lower cost with a quicker turnaround time. After you have a prototype that you're happy with, the next step is the sourcing phase. So you're gonna to wanna to gather the right materials, find the right partners, and then after you'll go into the production phase. This right here is also referred to as the supply chain. The supply chain is the vendors, the activities, and the resources that it takes to get a product into the customer's hands. This phase also includes finding the right warehouses, figuring out your shipping situation, but for the most part, you'll probably be looking at finding the right manufacturers. I don't know if you've ever read the book Shoe Dog, but it's a memoir by the founder of Nike. It showed me the importance of diversifying your supply chain. You should find multiple suppliers for the different materials that you will need. And you'll also wanna find two different manufacturers. Having a backup manufacturer will allow you to negotiate costs for one, but it'll also allow you not to be overly dependent on just one manufacturer. If you don't have a second option, you'll be at their mercy if they're late on orders or if they suddenly decide to increase their prices on you. Sourcing several options is an important part of safeguarding your business for the long term. When it comes to looking for suppliers, there are plenty of resources both online and in person. This might seem old school, but many business owners will attend trade shows dedicated to sourcing. Trade shows like Magic in Las Vegas provide the opportunity to meet hundreds of vendors at once to see, touch, and discuss materials and build personal relationships with the suppliers. Trade shows can be valuable when it comes time to negotiating prices. It also saves you time to see everything in one day rather than waiting for everything to be shipped to you. So try looking at trade show exhibitor lists online. Costing. After research, planning, prototyping, and sourcing is done, you're gonna have a clearer picture of what it will cost to produce your product. Costing is the process of taking all that information gathered so far and adding it up to see what your cost of goods sold will be, otherwise known as COGS. Next, you can determine a retail price and gross margin. Begin by creating a spreadsheet with each additional cost broken out as a separate line item. This should include all of your raw materials, factory setup costs, manufacturing costs, and shipping costs. It's important to factor in shipping, import fees, and any duties in order to get your final product into your customer's hands. Don't forget to include this, as these fees can have a significant impact on your COGS, depending on where you're producing the product. If you want this product pricing calculator, I'll make sure to leave it in the description box for you. If you were able to secure multiple quotes for different materials or manufacturers, you can create a second version of the spreadsheet so that you can compare. This is also helpful if you're comparing local production versus overseas production. At a glance, it might look cheaper to go overseas, but once you input your duties, your taxes and shipping, you might be surprised. Once you've calculated your total COGS, you can come up with a retail price for your product and subtract the COGS from that price to get your potential gross margin or profit on each unit sold. Let's take a look at the three most popular industries with specific tips, starting with fashion and apparel. Tips for developing a new fashion product. In the fashion industry, product development usually begins the old school way with a hand-drawn sketch or the digital equivalent made using a program like Procreate. A sketch is then developed into a sample using a pattern maker or a seamstress. During the prototyping phase, a size set is created, which means a range of samples with different measurements for each size you wanna sell. Once the size set is finalized, it is then put into production. Rather than make the product, some fashion and apparel businesses choose to use print-on-demand to produce their clothing in the beginning. Print-on-demand allows you to upload designs to a third-party app that connects your store with a warehouse and a screen printing facility. When an order is placed online, your design is then printed onto an existing stock of t-shirts, sweaters, and various other items on offer, creating a finished product without the need to design the entire garment. If you want a full in-depth video on how to start a fashion line, I'll link that video right over here. Tips for developing new beauty products. From makeup to bath products to skincare, many beauty brands are focusing on all natural ingredients and sustainability which makes it easier to prototype a product on your own using everyday ingredients. White labeling is also popular in the beauty and cosmetics industry, which is the process of finding an existing product or manufacturer, 
than packaging and branding the products that they already produce. Whichever route you decide to take, mass manufacturing for cosmetics is usually done by working with a lab and a chemist to make sure that quality stays consistent at scale. Consider that you'll need to have proper labels and warnings. Research FDA regulations and how they pertain to your product and packaging, both where they are produced and where you intend to sell them. You'll also need to conduct tests and add necessary expiration dates that indicate shelf life. Tips for developing new food products. Food and beverage products are among the easiest to start developing at a low cost and from the comfort of your own home. Creating a new energy bar can be as simple as buying ingredients and tweaking the recipe in your own kitchen. Lara American did this when she started Lara Bar. In order to move from recipe to packaged goods that you can sell in store or online, you will need to find a commercial kitchen that is licensed to produce food and has passed a health and safety inspection. These kitchens are usually set up with large ovens and cooking equipment to accommodate large batches. But if you are considering mass production and packaging, a co-packer or co-manufacturer might be a better option. These are manufacturing facilities that specialize in processing raw materials and producing food and beverage products at scale. You'll need to think about labels and warnings that display ingredient lists, nutritional information, and expiry dates. You'll also want to get acquainted with the laws and regulations like health claims. Like I mentioned earlier, each journey to a finished product is different. If you find yourself struggling just to figure it all out, remember that every product that came before yours had to overcome the same challenges as you. You have the potential to make great things happen. Manifest positivity by envisioning your success and speaking it into reality. In addition to a positive mindset, following these steps will help you break down the overwhelming task of bringing a new product to market into more digestible phases. Follow these steps to set yourself up for a successful final product. Selling online with your own e-commerce website has never been easier, faster, or more scalable. Shopify is a really great place to start. Setting up your store can actually be done in a matter of days and you can do it all by yourself. You don't need a fancy coder. You can get started with a free 14 day trial. There is no commitment at all. You don't even need to give your credit card information and you actually have two full weeks to build a fully beautiful, branded, personalized e-commerce store. I'm gonna leave a link for you in the description box so you can take advantage of the free 14 day trial. So now you have the tools to get yourself started on developing your first new product. If you're hungry for more knowledge and you wanna learn how to find, source, and sell a product that already exists, you're gonna to wanna to check out this free 40 minute webinar. Just click the link in the description box below to register. Learn with Shopify is a channel dedicated to small business owners with big plans. We post new videos every week that gives you the knowledge you need to start and grow a successful online business. So make sure that you're subscribed. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure that you're giving it a big thumbs up because that's gonna help our channel and our community grow. I'm your host, Michelle Valley. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.